Hello, everybody. Guess what? It's me again, Jim Mundy, the historian for the Union League Legacy Foundation. And you are watching another episode of Mondays with Mundy. So over the last two or three years, I've gotten a lot of nice comments about some of these episodes. But the most uh, common comment is that people like architecture. Of course, I'm an architecture geek, so that's music to my ears. Uh, and I've done a couple of programs on architecture, not just about the league house itself, but members who had some pretty nice houses or architects who were league members. Uh, this time we're going to try something a little different. Um, I'm going to call this episode Then and Now, because I'm going to show you rooms in the Broad Street building uh, and the way they looked over time from then to now. All right, And we're going to focus on just four rooms, uh, the Broad Street hallway, and then we're going downstairs to the Heritage Center. Uh, we'll do the hallway rotunda, as it's called today, and then we'll do what is known as the Huber Room and the Sander Room. And Hopefully the illustrations and images and photographs you see give you some idea of what, how the, these spaces evolved over time in terms of the decoration, because this stuff is all still there under all the stuff that's on the walls right now, which I think is kind of neat. And that's why I geek out on it. So, so I hope you geek out with me. Let's see what happens, okay? So the first thing I have to do is share my screen. And it looks like I, I'm almost there. Oh. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Oh, there we go. Did it. All right. Then and now, how rooms at the league have changed. So before we go on the inside, we're going to go with the outside. So this is how the building looked when it was open on May 11th of 1865, almost 158 years ago, to the present to the, the broadcast of this episode. So it seems appropriate that we do something like this after all, doesn't it? Uh, Scottish American architect John Fraser, first Second Empire or French Renaissance building in Philadelphia. All right. And it hasn't changed a whole lot on the outside, but it has changed somewhat. Now let's take a look at another version. This is 1908. So the basic building is still there, but there have been additions over time. So uh, going from right center right to the right, you'll see those three dark windows kind of lower center. That's the old cafe today. That's not an original building to the clubhouse. It was added in 1885 and 86. And then to the right of that, you have those, the first of the two story structures there. That one room standing by itself is the boardroom that was also added around the same time. That was not original either, but it's there now. And then beyond that to the far right, we have what was known as assembly hall. That was the first major addition to the building added in 1881. And the first floor that is above gr the ground level, uh, was the billiard room and above that was something called assembly hall that is the ballroom of the day itself so today that would be 1862 on the first floor and then lincoln hall on the second floor and here we have the broad street building today pretty spiffy looking it's aged incredibly well because the league takes care of it so well so let's go inside and see what we see so here you have the floor plan Luckily, we have it. It's the only floor plan we have for the building because the architect's drawings were lost in a fire in 1866. So this is from a newspaper article, Evening Bulletin of 1865. So you can see you walk up the Broad Street steps, there's that hallway. And on the right-hand side, in the lower left-hand corner, the smoking room, right-hand side, the parlor. But if you go down the stairs, and you can see them on the left-hand side of the hallway, you'll now find the Heritage Center, and you'll find the Hewer room on the left-hand side under smoking and the Sando room on the right-hand side under the parlor. So let's, let's start our journey. So turns out the earliest image we have of the Broad Street hallway is not a photograph, but rather an illustration from a newspaper. And this is President Rutherford B. Hayes and Mrs. Lucy Hayes at the league for a reception in 1878. And eventually there would be 15 presidents in that in the league house. And the Hayes are one of the earliest ones to visit the league. And you'll notice that there's lots of ferns for decoration. And you see those beautiful torchers on the newel posts, those light uh, fixtures, if you will. Uh, they're not original. Uh, they weren't there when the building opened in 1865. But because there was so little natural light in the hallway, they were added to help illuminate the hallway itself. That's why they're there. So we will leave the Hayes and their reception, and we will move to 1887. And this is from a photo album that was taken uh, and printed that year, done by a studio named Gilbert and Bacon. And I'm glad they did it because we have, they have some wonderful photographs. And the hallway itself is still pretty much the same today. Same now, obviously, not all the rooms off the hallway are the same, obviously, because on the right-hand side, the first doorway you can see was actually the restaurant. Today, we know that as the Thomas Pappas Business Center. Okay, and you 
can see there's a second door past that, and that obviously is no longer there. They don't need it. And of course, down the hall on the right-hand side, you see this, the grand staircase with the torchers, and there's the Broad Street door with all that light coming in. But you can see they only have, well, in the illustration, we can see three gas layers, but there was a fourth one. And that's that. But what I miss the most, I think, are the pedestals with the portrait busts. I think they're magnificent. And of course, those upholster benches, which were there when I started the league in 1978. So they were there for a long time. Moving on, behind all that paint, we have decorating schemes from over oh, from the past 150, 60, 158 years. So the door you see there is called the Meredith Cafe. Uh, that is today's entrance, though wider, to the Pappas Business Center, just to put that in context. But in the mid 1880s, the league hired its, one of its own members named George Herzog to redecorate the entire Broad Street building. And Herzog was the right man for the job. He was a decorative artist. He was from Germany. He was a, an immigrant. Uh, but he got his first job painting castles for King Ludwig in Bavaria. So he was well skilled at doing that kind of work. Now, the paint color itself is a beautiful, um, I would call it a spruce green, if you will. And that beautiful striated stencil pattern is done in silver paint. So you have silver on top of green. And it is just lovely. And you can see the uh, just the beautiful design there, designed by, by Herzog. Another one coming up. So opposite side of the hall. So if you're walking down the hall, the last on the right-hand side, before you leave the hallway itself in the middle section, there used to be the cigar lighter because that's where the cigar desk was opposite. But so this is in the right-hand corner. And you can see they've taken the cigar lighter out. And behind it, we've, they've exposed some more of the Herzog stencil pattern. Again, green paint underlying and then with the silver stencil over top of that. And it is just absolutely gorgeous stuff. It's still there. I don't know if anybody would, besides me, who would like to see it come back today, but I'd love to see it come back. Anyway, moving on. So this is this is 1902, and you can see it's a very different hallway. The gasoliers are gone, replaced by electric fixtures, one of which is still in the house and functioning, but one of which is also in the archival collection, our material culture collection. Uh, we still have this, the pedestals and the portrait busts, but we have and the tour shares, but we have a very different color scheme. I don't know if you can tell that or not. It's a it's a much darker scheme. The walls, the, the colors were brown, red, and orange. We also have plaster work now on the ceiling as well. And most importantly, because it's going to play into the story, is the tall case clock on the right-hand side that was installed there in 1892, commissioned by the Art Association in 1888. And that is the calendar, the calendar astrological clock that was done by Tiffany and Company for the Art Association. And it's interesting because when we go look at some other stuff, this is what we find. So rather than moving that great big tall case clock with its mercury pendulum, every time they painted the hallway or did something in the hallway, they simply painted around it, or at least they reached behind it as much as they could. But they didn't reach everything. And that's why we know that we had that, that brown and red and orange color scheme because it's still there on the wall as outlined by the shape of the tall case clock itself. Pretty neat, isn't it? Okay. Now, obviously, when they redid the hallway, they moved the clock, and yes, they painted behind it. So that's but so it's but the paint is still there though. So, and then if you go behind the grand staircase, as if you're going down to the Herded Center, and there's the gate on the left hand side. So that's the the what would be the southeast corner of the hallway, and we have some more evidence of both the Herzog and then the ninth and the early 1900 color scheme. So there's Hertz. So that piece of railing that you see in the center there is that's egg and dart. And it covered over the Herzog scheme. That's the green and the silver again. But above and below that rail, you have the brown and the red. Above it. Pretty, so you get some idea what the colors were. And it would have been a lot more vibrant in the early 1900s. But nonetheless, though, so that's the kind of stuff that's just laying, laying underneath all those other layers of paint. And this is what the hallway looked like in the 1960s. Clearly, they've gone more institutional. It is a, it's only two colors. It's basically gray on the bottom and a cream color or a buff on above it with a white ceiling. But there's a tall case clock. All right. Now, you may also have noticed, maybe not, but the high relief on the left-hand side has been moved. It's not there anymore. It has been moved a few feet to the left so that they could center it on the stairwell. And that happened in 2005, 2006. 
And this is what it looked like after the redecorating scheme of 2005, 2006. And we've gone monochromatic, if you will. That is, it's white. It's all white. So the only color basically is in the carpeting and what little upholstery has color. But the bones are still there, as is although as, is, as are all those pink colors underneath it. And this is the hallway today. It's now more or less of our, our Civil War Museum in a way, because it's all Civil War related. So, but still monochromatic, but with a, a blue pattern carpet instead. Now you may have noticed. Oh, 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 no, 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 there we go. Look down the hallway, and on the right hand side, you'll see America mourning her fallen brave. And this was 1902. There she is today. Okay. Now, now she moved in between, but that's okay. We won't go into that story. But anyway, so there she is. All right. So we've gone down the stairs into what we call the Heritage Center. So you go down the stairs, you turn to the right. And in this uh, floor plan, as first proposed for the Heritage Center, uh, slightly altered, you can see they have the, what they call the foyer. And left hand side exhibition room is now the Sando, the, the Hewer room. And on the right hand side is now the Sando room. So let's take a look. So 1902 again, this is what that space looked like because it was very different. There was no, actually the, the biggest changes took place in 1911 when they when they turned the space into the ladies dining room. We've talked about that in a previous episode, so I'll go through it now, but there was no door at street level. So this was just one big, large enclosed space instead. So we're looking south, that's the south wall that you see in front of us. And you can see those columns for the beautiful Corinthian capitals, they're still there. We'll talk about them later on. And to the far right, you'll see the door that leads to the stairs that go up to the Street hallway. And then in the 1930s, the league hired the architectural firm of Ritter and Shea to redecorate the ladies' cocktail lounge and ladies' dining room. And this is what the, the foyer was turned into a rotunda. And so where you see those large planters in front of those mirrors, those spaces are uh, were created. And behind them then are those columns that you just saw in an earlier photograph. So we're looking from east to west, going down the hall. The doorway is behind us at this point in time. Beautiful. I can imagine what that must have looked like. Actually, I probably saw it in 1978, but just forgot. And this is what it looks like today. So again, more monochromatic, but we have the Romanelli marbles instead down there to give it real some, some oomph, some decorative oomph, if you will. And again, looking from east to west. And then going back in time a little bit on the south room, which was the cocktail area. This is when the room is decorated by Dorothy Draper. And so that the print, the, 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 the upholstery and the drapery would have been brightly colored and decorated in floral and things like that. Really, it must have been an incredible looking room. And another view of it. And now we're looking toward the southwest corner. And then this is what it looked like after the heritage opened in 2011. So again, we're looking due south, all right? Uh, and this was the original exhibit scheme used in the room. Uh, it has all changed now. It's very different. We don't have the large upholstered benches there anymore, but as you see, as you're about to see another photograph, you'll notice that what has not changed is the ceiling and the light fixtures, they're still there. So this is, the, the second most recent exhibit, but it's, you can see how we've changed the space for the exhibits. We use, we use the walls a lot more than we did before in some ways. We've opened the space up by taking those benches out, but the ceiling and the light fixtures were still there. And this is the current exhibit, the city divided. And again, same ceiling, same light fixtures. So, so we're going to go, we're going to turn around and go across the rotunda and into today's Sandra room. But in 1902, it was a barbershop. Before that, it was a pool room, but regretfully nobody thought to take a photograph of it, or if they did, we can't find one. So around 1890, it was turned into a barbershop and a Turkish bath. The Turkish bath is off to the left-hand side, out of the range of the photograph. But we're looking in the northeast corner of the room, and remember that because there's that alcove, it's about to show up again. Beautiful, neat stuff. And by the way, that's a marble tile mosaic floor that is still there under the current parquet floor. Here we go, 1910, 1911, ladies dining room. This is from the 1950s, right? And we're looking, we're in that Northeast corner of the room, looking into the room itself, right? And then this is what the room looked like in the 1890s. It was painted in much softer palette, more appropriate for what then had was known as the Boker dining room because it was no longer ladies dining room. There's no need for ladies dining room. 
by, by literally 1980, that era had passed. This is a much softer tone, if you will. And again, we're looking into the northeast corner because there's that alcove, all right? And then it looked like this. So uh, by the turn of the 20th century, the room had been painted yellow. Don't ask me. And this shows the demolition of the space after 1862 had opened in October of 2009 on the first floor middle section of the clubhouse. So this space is being demolished basically to make way for the heritage center itself. And there's some more to another demolition photo. I like demolition photos. So, but we learned a lot. We saw things that we didn't know were there and found things that we never expected to find. So neat stuff. And then this is what it looks like today. Now, as you can see the in the ladies' dining room, that whole left-hand wall was missing. They tore it, they took it out in 1910 and 1911 to double the size of the room, but they reinstated the wall in 2011 to make this a reception room or a, 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 live, or a reading room, basically, if you will. And you can see you have the bookcases and the furniture and things like that. It's a magnificent room. And again, on the right hand, upper right-hand corner, we're looking into the Northeast and there is the alcove still there, as is that beautiful fish scale leaded glass in the windows. Another view of the room looking towards the Southeast. And the table is gone now because we use the room for a lot of social functions and the table was just in the way quite literally. And this is what a social function would look like. So, and it's probably, I think, uh, the, the most beautiful room to have a dinner in at night. When you put candelabra on the table and turn the lights down, you think you're in the 19th century. And it's just magnificent. So, so you can see how these rooms have changed over time. And so uh, here's the clue that says the program is over because we're going to close the door on our little program today. And I, I took this photograph back in 2011 when they were getting rid of some doors and this beautiful hardware, as we call it, uh, you know, the doorknob, but just look at the style of it. And, and you think about the effort that went into designing something like that and then recreating it and putting it all over the place. So, so that's my way of saying goodbye. And this is the end. I hope you enjoyed it. We will have other opportunities to look at other rooms in the house then and now. So stay tuned for those. And in the meantime, we appreciate your patronage. Hope you enjoy the programs and we'll see you in two weeks. So in between, stay wealthy, stay hell, and thank you for watching. Goodbye.